should have been recording because that would have it would have been life lessons with Ken Fox. Yeah, right. The viewers just missed a very uh, important uh, lesson. Yeah. So if you're just joining, this is uh, this is Deep Grooves with uh, Garrett Waite and Ken Fox. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just trying to talk some sense into Garrett here, but it's not working. No, 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 it's working. It's working. So today we're doing country records. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. All right. Hopefully we didn't pick the same records. Uh, probably not. I know you only have like five country records. I literally only have like five country records. And I sold them all to you. <laughs> so, who's starting today? Let's see. Uh, I think I will start today. Uh, I am gonna start with. What am I gonna start with? Yeah, I'll start with this one. Uh, we kind of brought this up in another episode, but not officially. This needs to be mentioned. Oh obviously. man, I picked that. You one. knew I was gonna pick this one. We talked about it. This is the only country record I have. <laughs> I did a lot of research on this actually. Uh, it's like a about great record. Yeah, like historically it's it's significant. It was the first platinum selling country record. Is that light? Too Yeah, let's go like this. That's fine. This looks like you have a halo. This was the first I don't know that's not. That's <laughs> uh, this is the first platinum selling country record and it was like uh, it was produced, or I think it was produced by Waylon Jennings and maybe Willie Nelson. It was, it was kind of their record, Waylon and uh, Willie. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of a predecessor to the Highwaymen later okay. on. Okay, interesting, yeah. But this was like, oh yeah. This is like 76 and the Highwaymen were a couple, maybe three, two, three, four years later or something, you know? Yeah. And they signed Sorry. up Johnny. And Chris. Oh yeah, okay. But this was like apparently the labels were like super, uh, like they were just kind of like controlling everything, and this was like the first record where the artists were like, "No, we're gonna do it our way." So obviously, you got Waylon Jennings, you got Willie Nelson, and then you also have Jesse Coulter and Tom, Tom, Tom Paul Gla Gla Glaser. 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 And uh, a lot of classics on here. Uh, I mean, all the all the Waylon and Willie tunes are pretty pretty much standard, you know, classic tunes. Uh, Suspicious Minds with Jesse and Waylon. I think that was probably before the. Uh, well, who, 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 probably one of them wrote it. I don't know, but uh, that's a good one. Big hit for Elvis. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Right, but I I don't know. I kind of like this one. Fat Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a great version. Yeah. Uh, Good Hearted Woman, that's like essential country listening. And uh, that was from a, so this version was from a live Waylon record, but then they like overdubbed Willie's voice into it. So it sounded like the two of them were performing together. That's what I read. Yeah, this this record's kind of like the turning point. It's almost kind of the start of outlaw mm -hmm. country, you know, which is a thing. Right. Which basically the, the country artists had to get enough independence from the record companies to be able to do what they wanted to do. Yeah. You know, this is on RCA, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most of the stuff on RCA, like, totally sucked. Right. I mean, it was like the epitome of bad production. So or over just, over production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just basically taking really good country music and watering it down into a slathering horrible you know puffy mess yeah and chet wow. atkins actually later in life said he kind of like regretted because he was kind of the main guy oh, he was the that. brains behind it all he yeah. was the one of the main producers yeah he said he kind of felt bad about that he's like you know maybe i maybe i kind of fucked up country a little bit and not in a good way <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, last – Oh, yeah. Uh, Willie bolted from RCA sure. pretty early on. He hit a bunch of records, you know, for right. him and decided that it wasn't working. So mm -hmm. went back to Texas and started doing his own kind of hippie country kind of thing. And Yeah. The rest <laughs> is sort of history. Right, right. Yeah. Anyways, the last two songs are um, <clears throat> also standard. These are the Tom Paul tracks. So T for Texas is a Jimmy Rogers tune. He was kind of, yeah. He's kind of, I think, acknowledged as kind of like one of the first recorded country artists, I think, like along with the... Uh, well, he was one the, of the first uh, country artists to... Well, first of all, he influenced Hank a lot. Sure. But he's one of the first country artists to kind of uh, cross over into some blues stuff and right. other things, and yeah. you know, known as being a master yodeler as well. Right, right. And he was recorded, I think, by the same guy on the same day as the Carter family's first recording. I'm pretty sure in this, like, in the same city, because they the Carter family had to drive like all day to get yeah. there, and I think it was either the same. It was the same guy, but I think they recorded it on the same day. And then uh, Put Another Log on the Fire, which I think is also referred to as the male chauvinist anthem. And it's this guy, like, ordering his woman around, and then he can't figure out why she wants to leave him. <laughs> which is, uh, I found out, is by Shel Silverstein, who, who wrote, um, who's like a poet. Yeah. Uh, he wrote, like, Where the Sidewalk Comedian. Gets and stuff like that. And comedian, yeah. So this is cool. Yeah, if you don't know anything about country, like I think for a lot of people, this is the album that kind of made country like, oh, that's something that I can like get into. Well, you know, along with the sort of outlaw thing, like I was saying before, a lot of the hippies started to get into country and bluegrass. Yeah. So there was like this mass exodus crossover, you know, of people who were previously listening to psychedelic and rock music and started to get into the country stuff you know yeah. the birds the birds yeah. a lot to do with that and right. there's a lot of bands you know that kind of cross kind of put their foot in the water you know mm -hmm. kind of got the country thing rolling but you know the the willie and Whalen thing was full on mm -hmm. you know yeah brought the bikers and the hippies and you know everybody together yeah so I'm going to go, I'm going to start way back. Oh, there we go. The Leuven Brothers. Yeah. Tragic Songs of Life. So these guys were known as uh, being sort of the, the, the um, guys that maybe inspired some of the more harmony-oriented bands later on, like Simon and Garfunkel, and mm. probably the Everly Brothers, too. Um, because, you know, it kind of just kind of went from one to the next. The yeah. Everly Brothers inspired, obviously, Simon and Garfunkel. But I think these guys in inspired the Everly Brothers. So great harmonies. Yeah. Um, these guys did bluegrass. They did gospel. They did country. And um, this is the original version on the kind of turquoise Ooh. capital label, but you don't see much. I actually bought this at a second hand shop for like five bucks. They didn't even wow. know what it was. And then, um, you know, your chances of finding one of these are almost impossible. So there is a really good capital reissue right now mm. with a really nice uh, gatefold cover. So this is really good pressing, too. I think they did two or three of the Leuven Brothers um, titles. Mm -hmm. They did their gospel. They had a full-on gospel album as well. So, yeah, a lot of the bluegrass guys were inspired by them as well. But the, the key thing is the harmonies. You know, yeah. Great Incredible. harmonies. Yeah. So I think this came out like in the late 50s, maybe, or I don't even know, maybe early 60s. But yeah, it goes back a ways. 
Yeah, they're amazing. The older one was it Ira Ira Lubin, who was the or what was his name? Yeah, there one of them was Ira. Yeah, he was like I think Charlie maybe was the yeah. The, the the older one or the, I think the guy who sang the high parts he was a pretty volatile uh, human being. <laughs> like at one point he got in a fight with his wife and she like put six like shots into him. <laughs> Really? And then, and then, and I don't remember what she she said. Something really like she said, "If I had another bullet, I would have killed him with it, or something like like." Finished him off. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He was he was a pretty uh, troubled guy. Anyway, so um, kind of continuing uh, on the uh, like hippie hippie country thing. Obviously, you knew I was gonna pull this one out. The lighting in here is not so good. You can't get the full splendor of the cover. This is Olden in the Way. For those of you who don't know, uh, this fellow right here is Mr. Jerry Garcia. And over here, we have Dave Grisman. And, and uh, Pastor Clemens playing fiddle. Uh, yep, yep. Pastor Argu Clemens. Arguably one of the best fiddle players of that time. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty sweet. Uh, Carter Stanley and Peter Rowan. And it's a uh, bluegrass. Oh wait a minute! No, 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 no! Wait, no! Ignore me. Carter I'm reading Stanley. off the. I'm reading off the. No, I'm reading off the um, composers. Jerry Garcia, David Grisman, Peter Rowan, John Kahn on bass, Bassett Clemens on violin. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's just like really, really well done uh, bluegrass. The car harmonies bluegrass. are really yeah hippie bluegrass. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and so I think probably a lot of people don't know, you know, I'm getting <coughs> flummy, sorry, uh, that uh, Jerry Garcia was like a champion uh, banjo player. Like, that, I, one of my teachers told me that they, uh, they banned him from doing bluegrass competitions because he was just sweeping all of them. So, yeah, he's uh, had him with a lot of other bands and played, played banjo. Yeah, he's incredible, like, incredible. Like it's almost, it's on a technical level, it's almost better than his guitar playing. It's not quite as distinct as his guitar playing because he has to fill like a, a certain function here versus like his guitar playing. He kind of invented the kind of style of guitar playing he did versus here is more traditional, but man, he's amazing. He's an amazing banjo player. Uh, and this, the vocals are really good. Like for me, the bluegrass thing, like they gotta be those high vocals that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and there's a bunch sound, of Garcia man. Grisman records that they did at the end of his life. Yeah. Like six of them, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some of those. Those are nice. Great stuff. Yeah. But yeah, they, they got a couple other records. And this is one thing, unless you go to look for it on YouTube, like this album, for some reason, isn't on like iTunes or Apple Music or anything. Like they have other like live recordings, but this is like the. You know, this is like the essential uh, yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's not in print right yeah, now. Yeah, it's hard to find. So I think Ryko, Ryko put it out on CD maybe in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen anything lately. So my next pick, another ah! one. Wait, no, that's not what I thought it was. Really uh, bad uh, um Family in country, mm -hmm. uh, the Maddox family um the maddox brothers put out stuff as well but rose maddox did uh stuff with her family and with her brothers and then she did solo stuff and this is another uh capital thing um great vocalist excellent uh instrumentation uh, this is sort of a bluegrass album it's not like super traditional but uh yeah, Rose Maddox is somebody everybody needs to know something about if you're delving into the country side of things. Hmm. Great stuff. She did some stuff that was kind of almost rockabilly as well. Hmm. I I think I've probably heard her name, but I've never <clears throat> I've never heard her music. Yeah, great stuff. Get, this get is my favorite that. one by her. Okay. So cool. great, 
great vocalist, great country vocalist, and kind of a Patsy Klein sort of way, but a little gutsier. Hmm. So. Cool. Speaking of speaking of which, wait, wait. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Ta da! Is that a hilltop thing? It's uh, yeah. I don't know. This is the only Patsy Cline record I have, but it's really good. Uh, this was, I think, a posthumous um, collection of. It's kind of a greatest hits thing. Is that um, a hilltop or is it Decca? No, it's hilltop. Yeah, so it is sort of an aftermarket. Thing. Yeah, yeah, but the, I mean the recordings. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's a better like a more suited record that if you're trying to get into Patsy Cline, that that's like, but this, but this is the one I got. There we go. Like yeah. this one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She's got a, like, it's really like my sister listens to like radio country. And so like, sometimes when I get in the car, cause we share the car when she's in town and I'll listen to it. And it's like, how am I here? And then you listen to Patsy Cline and she's like so honest and there's like no affectation to her singing at all. You know what I mean? It's like such a weird contrast within the supposedly the same genre. Um, yeah, she's amazing. Here she is a picture of her on the back. And she was like kind of a, um, a diva, I think. Like she, and she was kind of like, like she would swear a lot and she like, she had yeah. no problem being like friendly with like, the guys. You know what I mean? Like she was, poker. Yeah, yeah. She she was like a total badass and like like people didn't know how to handle her but but she was yeah she was an incredible incredible person. So what and this great is my vocals. next pick. Uh, nice. So this is this is a collection of stuff on Decca. So it's got all the good stuff. I fall to pieces crazy, which yeah. of course was written by Willie. Yeah. But look at that picture. Look at that hair. That's rock and roll. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, the Rainbow Label Decca. So great sounding pressing. Yeah, I, I'm thinking you you need some boots like this. Yeah. Oh, is it boots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, that I'll would, take that the would whole outfit. Look for you, you know. Yeah. The gold boots. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't go wrong with anything Patsy Klein did. Yeah. Kind of look for the DECA stuff. It's That's good to know. A lot better quality pressing. Yeah, I'd imagine. Let's see. I'll stick with, uh, stick with female vocalists here. This is like country seems to me to be the most like where you see kind of equal – representation of both genders as like leaders you know what i mean like you see it in rock a little bit not in jazz so much i mean it's changing now in jazz but like historically like like you had all like female band leaders all the time you know versus yeah like i in, think female vocalists you know were just a big part of the scene right right actually now that i think about it in the blues in the early days of the blues it was like almost almost an entirely female art form when you think about like, uh, well, not yeah, like the blues maybe, queens, maybe a third, you know. Yeah, Memphis Minnie and Big Mama Thornton, and right. there's a bunch of good ones. Well, Bessie Smith, like the, like the, like not the blues that we think of, but like what was they were calling the blues back in yeah, the day. Yeah, big, big label. Yeah, kind of almost cabaret. Type right, right, blues. with big band sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, another super important vocalist this is emmy lou harris um and she's actually she's almost more important as a like supporting vocalist especially with like graham parson but also with like a lot of other people i don't have the bob list dylan. bob dylan hold on i'm gonna pull this up they have a desire yeah they have a playlist of just like all the people that she uh where is it maybe not well, the Graham Parsons stuff and then Dylan stuff are probably the the most well known, but she was also a really uh known band leader in her own right. 
Well, that's why. Yeah. So this is this. That's why I'm pulling this up. Wait, wait. Hold on. I want to see if I can find. He had some amazing people in her band, you know. Holy like, shit! Yes. Rodney Crowell and. Uh, okay, I can't Albert Lee it. and. You know. Yeah. Let's see who's on this one. Uh, yeah, Ricky Skaggs is on here. Albert Lee. I don't know if I recognize anybody else. I'm still fairly new. Anyway, this is a this is a really oh James Burton is on here. Um, yeah, she had the hot band, and the hot band was I a think pretty that's, hot band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a killer record. Um, yeah, so if you can find the stuff with Graham Parson, that stuff is amazing. Uh, but this one is really good uh, with of her as a leader, and she's got some you know some classic covers on here. She's got Poncho and Lefty. Um, Towns Van Zandt. What? That's a Tom's Van Zandt. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you Never Can Tell, which is Chuck Berry. And uh, and then uh, uh, She by Graham Parsons. Um, but uh, yeah, she's really, like, really great, like, kind of electrifying sort of vocalist. Uh, a lot of energy. Really, like, really beautiful voice. Again, like, no affectation, like, what you hear in, like, on the the supposed country that's on the radio now. I don't want to be like one of those guys that like back in my day. But you know, the stuff on the radio is kind of mostly garbage. And yeah. uh, this you this know, is if you like mostly, mostly production. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean some of the artists are decent. Her stuff mainly was live bands, you know. Right. And they right. would like go out and play for a year and then cut a record. Yeah. Yeah. And you can hear it. Like it's it's a it's a serious group. Um yeah, Emily Harris, she's incredible. Probably anything that she does, I would imagine, is, is amazing. Speaking of female vocalists. Oh, there we go. Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. Um, this is like my favorite by, by Johnny Cash. I mean, I love all the Johnny Cash stuff, but they've got this version of Jackson on here that just you know, gives me goosebumps with both of them singing. Is that Johnny Cash on the cover? Yes. Oh, okay. I see it now. Yeah, okay. The light yeah. was hitting him weird. Yeah. In his amphetamine. And he's not. Period. He's not wearing black. No. He's pretty skinny. He's yeah. Huh. That's <laughs> deep. Yeah. It but does man, like. I, I, I want to walk right the, past him. I love the stuff that he does with, with June, you know, and I, I actually like her records a lot. You know, she did a bunch of stuff in the later period of her life that was really good. Mm. Of course, she was a member of the famed Carter family. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this, I feel bad I don't have any Carter family records to bring up, but. Yeah. Another time. Well, they're they're pretty pretty rootsy, you know. Yeah. But this this was done like in the sort of key Columbia period, you know. This is a two I. So you can find all this stuff; it's out there. Hmm. I guess the trick is finding copies that haven't been played to death. Yeah, people played this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, carrying on with Johnny Cash and Julie Carter Cash. Awesome. All right. I kind of, I have kind of like one more. I think that'll put me at like five. Um, like we said, like my country collection is pretty slim at the moment. I love country, but I just, I just haven't had the time to build up my collection yet. Uh, this is another important figure kind of in terms of like, um, like a lot of the early country artists were more like documenters. Like they were just people who when they started recording or when they discovered them had this whole like knowledge of what they called at the time, like old timey music. So the Carter family was a good example. They were actually kind of musicologists. So um, the husband of the family, he would go around with this other musician and they would go and collect songs and then they would teach it to the group. Um, and then they would record them. And Doc Watson is kind of similar in that respect in that he, he, actually, so this record is kind of an anomaly. This record has some original stuff on it, but for the most part, he was kind of like a thesaurus of 
old timey music. So he, and he also, so he plays guitar on this record uh, exclusively, but he also played banjo. Um, really, really virtuosic musician. And uh, like this kind of low haunting voice. Um, so this is a really, this is called Southbound. And uh, it's got his son, Merle Watson, who I think died in a, a tractor accident. Yeah, that's, I think. Merle Fest is named after him. Oh, that makes sense. Maybe it's festivals. Yeah. Um, and then John Pilla, also on guitar, and Russ Savakis. So it's kind of, you know, it's trimmed down group, but really rich textures. They have, like, the, the guitars kind of pan, and you get all these really lush interplay that's, like, um, you find in some other kind of music, but especially in, like, the bluegrass kind of tradition, man, it's really... Uh, Okay, are we back? We're back. We should be back. Okay. Well, I'm Ho back. Hopefully it saved whatever we just recorded. If not, welcome to... <laughs> I think we should be okay. Uh, sorry, I ran out of space on my computer. Anyway, Doc Watson, everybody. Give him a listen. So I got one more, and uh, this is something newer, but I love this record. Cuter Jam. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Put the O back in the country. What a great record. And it finally came out on vinyl, like just recently. So I've been sort of lusting after, you know, an original copy of this on vinyl, but it was like 150 bucks. So now it came out. And it sounds great. It's good pressing, even though it's on Universal. Um, but yeah, this is this is just one of the great kind of modern master pieces of outlaw country, um, and kind of a Neil Youngish sort of way, like more electric Neil Young. Mm -hmm. It definitely got an edge to it, but just love it. Great songwriting, great guitar. Um, I think Shooter Jennings is a great producer and a great writer. You know, he's produced a lot of stuff for other people lately. Um, probably the most um, noteworthy being the new Tanya Tucker record. And he's actually produced a Brandy Carlisle record. So, hmm. so Shooter Jennings put the O back in country. The ultimate statement about yeah. This state of country music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool record. I mean, I listen. I mean, so for those of you who don't know, I'm having issues with my turntable at the moment. But I, I listened to a little bit of it because I just got it from Ken at Paramount Record Store, which we'll be plugging shortly. And uh, it's got like, it's modern production, but it's not like, you don't hear the production. You know it's what I mean? It's though. Yeah. It's, it's still got sort of, grit to it. It's like, a, it's like Harvest or something like that yeah you know with kind of kind of grittier songwriting too you know mm -hmm. like kind of you know talks about getting busted for weed a lot and stuff like that yeah you know yeah but yeah i, I just love it i can't get enough of it I, and you know there's not a lot of those kind of newer like sort of country guys that do it for me mm -hmm. i kind of like chris stapleton and some of those guys but this is a lot grittier than that. Yeah. Like this is this is like almost Leonard Skinner, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. So, great record though. Yeah. I'm gonna bring up a book real quick. Just kind of flash it on the screen and then pull it away. This is for anyone who's like interested in country but doesn't know anything about country and doesn't maybe get country, like this is a good book to, this is, this is, was, this was kind of like my guide into under, like understanding the history of it and stuff. This is called In the Country of Country, A Journey to the Roots of American Music. And this guy, um, like he interviewed all the people. So you're, they're talking about Jimmy Rogers. We talked about uh, Chet Atkins, um, Sarah Damn. Carter, Patsy Cline, Bill Monroe, like all, all the cats and either interviewed the people directly or like friends or 
musicians who have worked with them and stuff. It's like really um, very human kind of like it's like, you know, humorous and also, you know, deep or kind of dark sometimes. Um, it comes up all the way to like, you know, the Emmy Lou Harris, Iris Dement, some of the more modern, uh, well, I guess within the last 40 years um, type uh, musicians. This is really good. Check this out. Yeah, I also watched the uh, Ken Burns documentary on oh, music. I heard that's amazing. It's, it's excellent. Yeah. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. Cool. Yeah. Total so top shelf all the way wow so we got to uh do some plugging first of all we should have said this in the beginning but if you like what we're doing you gotta subscribe because otherwise how, how are you gonna know when we're putting stuff out so to subscribe to the channel and maybe like this one you know show us some love but also if you're like me and you really love country music but your country collection is like kind of pathetic like Ken, what like are you yours. what are you supposed to do? Like yours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you have a kind of pathetic country collection, I mean, my country collection is great, but it's very tiny. That's that's how I'll yeah. put it. And 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 in this case, uh, size is is it does matter. So <laughs> how do I how do I increase the size of my country collection? You come down to uh, Paramount Record Shop on Friday or Saturday dig through our very extensive country co collection which we're always adding to by the way yeah yeah that's the thing easy. about being out here you know there's a lot of really good country records floating around and we get you know old folks walking in with just killer 50s country records all the time you know yeah so yeah i mean our country bin is pretty much full right now that's all good stuff it's hefty it's like a quarter of almost a quarter of the uh store it seems like maybe not quite that much but it's like it's there's a, hefty... a lot of, well bluegrass and we got a lot of celtic stuff yeah so come in and dig through it yeah all right well thanks for tuning in everybody for everyone who stuck out to the end um we'll see you all next week or whenever we, we're kind of sporadic, but whenever we do. All right, bye everybody. <laughs>